Remedy's 2001 masterpiece is as fast and thrilling as it is grim and stylish. Max Payne is just one of those games that's so well made and so cohesive that it's unforgettable, but you'd be forgiven for forgetting that a version came out on the Game Boy Advance. Max Payne on the GBA was developed by the Leeds-based Mobius Entertainment and initially released in December of 2003, over two years after the PC release in July of 2001. Founded in 1998, Mobius quietly developed licensed games and ports, most of which were GBA games. Off the back of such hits as American Idol, Bionicle the Game, Barbie Horse Adventure Wild Horse Rescue, and LEGO Drone Racers which we've looked at on this channel before, it might be sort of hard to see how this arguably unproven company landed themselves with the GBA adaptation of Max Payne. But digging a little deeper, there are some clues as to how this all happens, though there isn't a lot of information on this subject. At E3 of 2002, Mobius and BAM Entertainment partnered to present a GBA movie tie-in game for A Sound of Thunder. This was an isometric shooter featuring impressive graphics and polygonal 3D character models, and this very game engine would be modified for Max Payne. A Sound of Thunder was meant to be released in 2002, but it was shelved until its release in 2004 to coincide with both the delayed movie's release and the cancelled PS2 game's expected release. It was all a bit of a mess, and this game actually came out after the Max Payne GBA game, even though it was probably finished beforehand, providing sort of a proof of concept for Max Payne. Rockstar liked what they saw with The Sound of Thunder, so they contacted Mobius for a Max Payne GBA game, and after Mobius presented a prototype, Rockstar contracted them straight into full production. Thanks to having a ready-built engine, development only took five months from start to finish. It was quietly both announced and released in 2003 to fairly positive reviews, scoring a 78 on Metacritic. After Max Payne and A Sound of Thunder came out, Mobius was actually acquired by Rockstar Games and renamed as Rockstar Leeds. They would go on to develop Rockstar's PSP games, most famously being Grand Theft Auto Liberty City and Vice City Stories. President of Rockstar Sam Hauser talked in interviews at the time about how impressed he was by Mobius's work on Max Payne, and that was the main reason for the acquisition. So as far as how this thing plays, it's fairly straightforward. D-pad moves, right trigger activates bullet time, left trigger opens weapon select in real time, A shoots, and B jumps and activates things. It's fairly straightforward, but the feel of Max Payne is captured surprisingly well in some sense. Slow-mo jumping headfirst around corners and killing as many people as possible whilst downing painkillers is still the main game here. Time to kill is low, and blood decals decorate the dingy levels of the Big Apple, making it arguably the most gritty and violent GBA game there is. In many ways, this is a sort of demake of Max Payne, and that's exactly what's so fascinating about it. The game opens with its iconic visual novel-style cutscenes, which are left mostly intact here. The most noteworthy thing about these is that they are fully voice acted, which is incredibly uncommon for the GBA. The back of the box boasts that it has over 30 minutes of spoken dialogue, and I don't deny that. A house across the river on the Jersey side. Beautiful wife and a baby girl. The American dream come true. It's clear that it clearly sounds rather unclear, which is clear, but it's incredibly impressive. Mobius has experience in digitizing voice as they made the GBA American Idol game beforehand, and honestly, that entire game is a bit of a meme. Anyway, something else you'll notice about Max Payne's opening cutscene is that it includes the entire prologue. You know that heartwarming gameplay segment where Max gets home from work to find his wife and child murdered by junkies? That's just a cutscene now. In fact, a lot of Max Payne has been either relegated to a cutscene or more frequently just been cut entirely. Where the original game has 22 chapters and 3 playable prologues, the GBA version only has 11 chapters and no playable prologues, resulting in a runtime of about 4 hours. Funnily enough, Rockstar promised the length of the game to be about 10 to 15 hours, which makes me wonder if development time was cut short for whatever reason. The dream sequences were cut, and many plot arcs were either shortened or removed. For example, while tracking down Vinny on the PC, there's a point where he escapes onto a train, and you play through an entire level before 
before chasing him down. On the GBA, he never escapes onto the train and you literally cut to the chase. Jarring transitions come as a result of the game being all cut up and stitched back together. Like towards the end where Max just turns up at the AC Corporation skyscraper. There's a bit of foreshadowing, but for the most part, it feels like he just rocks up at the doorstep out of nowhere. Despite all the cuts and changes, the levels that were included here are actually remarkably similar to their original counterparts. On a surface level, you can see by looking at these side by sides that a lot of the textures have been repurposed into sprites on the little GBA screen. Considering the five month development time span, it's obvious why they did this and, in my opinion, the results are great. It's a good looking GBA game and the 3D character models blend in really well. It could be argued that the game looks too grainy, but I think it captures the look of Max Payne. It extends further than just the visuals though. Levels are laid out very similarly to the original, so a lot of it is actually really recognizable, even if it's all a bit rearranged. Remember the bank vault? Here it is on the GBA. How about that secret military base thing? That's here too. The control room in the train station? That looks like this. And how could you forget that Matrix lobby on the last level? That's here too. I love how some of the little in-engine cutscenes are handled here as well, like watch this clip from the original game and then again on the GBA. Home free, this way. The only weapons that have been omitted are the jackhammer auto shotgun and the sniper rifle, but otherwise it's all here. Generally, it can be pretty staggering how close this game resembles the full thing, all the way down to the little easter eggs and the small details. The dingy hotel level alone is full of examples of this. The beds vibrate if you interact with them, the room with the shotgun aimed at the door is here, the spy camera in the wardrobe is here, hell, even the TV is playing lords and ladies. It feels like all the little things that make Max Payne, Max Payne are here, and there's a certain satisfaction to be found in smugly grinning a little every time you recognize something. I bet if you're familiar with the game, you've probably been doing exactly that throughout this entire video. Unfortunately, however, the game isn't all good times. There's actually a myriad of problems here. Mainly, enemies shoot at you from off screen, which is never fun. The light auto aim mitigates this a bit, but not enough. Then there's the real time weapon switching, which is so clunky it makes using grenades often too much of a hassle for what they're worth. Action and jump are bound to the same button, which is weird because in game it'll put an exclamation point on the screen when there's something nearby to use, but if you press action then you'll usually just jump. You kind of have to wiggle into the right position to actually use things, which can be really awkward. Also, environmental puzzles, being just dodging flames most of the time, have annoying hitbox issues. Like, like look here, I, I thought I'd cleared the fire since the flames look elevated off the ground, but they just kept clipping the back of Max's ankles, I guess. Then there's the difficulty curve. The game starts incredibly easy, then hits a massive wall somewhere near the end of the game. It's almost like a switch, it suddenly gets really damn hard, and the increased difficulty just magnifies the aforementioned problems. I had to start using my emulator's quick save and quick load functions to get through it, and Funnily enough, doing so reminded me of the original Max Payne more than anything. So who is this game for? Should you play it? Well, if you've never played Max Payne before, track down a version of the original game before playing this. If you're after Max Payne on the go, the original game has been ported to iOS and Android. If you're curious to see a four to five hour long demake of Max Payne, then this is exactly that. And if you're a YouTuber who thinks they're funnier than they are and likes both Max Payne and GBA games, then this might just be the game for you. 